Today we're looking at our FST quiz for 7.1 and 7.2. Uh, we'll be looking at adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing rational uh, expressions. Uh, and we'll also be looking at domain. So starting with numbers 1 and 2 here, uh, finding the domain for the rational function. <coughs> for number 1, the denominator being x plus 6, the trouble with our domain is that the denominator cannot equal 0. So in this case, x plus 6 cannot equal 0. So if we just solve that, we would subtract 6 from both sides. So x cannot equal negative 6. Uh, that would be uh, really the description for the domain as well. You can also write that in interval notation. Um, that would look like this, where you would go from negative infinity up to negative 6, and union that with negative 6 up to positive infinity. Looking at number 2, we need to uh, do a little work with that denominator. Uh, when it's something like that x squared plus 2x minus 3, we can factor that. Once we have the factors, we should be able to a bit more easily find the restrictions on the denominator. Uh, and these are not meant to be super challenging factoring questions. In this case, it would just be an x plus 3 so, denominator being x plus 3 times x minus 1. Uh, so really then, the restrictions on the denominator is that x cannot be negative 3, because that would make the denominator 0, and x also cannot be a positive 1. So again, those are the domain restrictions. If we were to write that in interval notation, we would start at negative infinity up to negative 3, union that with negative 3 to 1, and union that with 1 to infinity. Uh, so a bit more involved there when we use the internal notation. All right, so looking with at number 3 here, uh, really just reducing down the uh, monomial terms that we have. So if we look at that, the 30 over 2, that would reduce down to just 15. That would end up on the top of our fraction. Notice the m's we have uh, 5 and a 9. Well, 9 is more than 5, so the m's will end up in the denominator and to a fourth degree because 9 is 4 more than 5. And if you notice the p's, 2 and then just a 1 there, really. So the p's end up on top and just a single p to the first power there. So 15p over m to the fourth uh, would be what we're looking at there. With number four, uh, there's a lot of factoring to be done. Um, and then we will cancel out some common factors and try to express that in lowest terms. So looking at that, the k squared plus 9k plus 14 we would um, factor that as k plus 7 times k plus 2. And the k squared plus 11k plus 28 would be a k plus 7 and k plus 4. Already noticed we got some k plus 7s there that will cancel out. The k squared plus 4k, we can take k out of that, get k times k plus 4. And the k squared plus 10k plus 16 would be a k plus 8, k plus 2. Now, like I said, we can cancel out the k plus 7s, cancel out the k plus 4s, also cancel out the k plus 2s. So we would be left with just the k over k plus 8. With number 5, notice that is dividing, so we will um, we'll still start by factoring. We can factor that 3p minus 3. We take the 3 out, we get 3 and then p minus 1. Now, what I'll do is I'll go ahead and flip and factor this at the same time. So 7p squared ends up on top, the 5p minus 5 ends up on the bottom, and then we get p minus 1 once we take the 5 out. Uh, so notice, again there, the p minus 1s will cancel. We've got a p and a p squared, so that p will cancel out one of those two p's. Um, the 3, 7, and 5 don't uh, reduce at all, so we end up with 21p over 5 is the result. Uh, 
Number six is another division. Um, again, we would factor each of those pieces, uh, again, flipping and factoring that divisor there. Uh, so the z squared plus 6z plus 8 would factor as z plus 2, z plus 4. Let's try very hard to make my z's and 2's look a little different. And then a z plus 2 again, and a z plus 5. So again, flipping and factoring that, the z squared plus 4z will end up on the bottom so that we can take a z out of that. And then we end up with z plus 4. z squared plus 8z plus 15 is a z plus 5 and a z plus 3. Again, if we look at what we can cancel out there, cancel out a pair of z plus 2s, uh, we can also cancel out a pair of z plus 4s and also those z plus 5s. So we end up with z plus 3 over z as the result. For number 7, we're adding these rational expressions together. In this case, they already have a common denominator, so we can just uh, add the numerators. Uh, 7 plus 3 is just 10, so we get 10 over 13x. You would reduce if you could. This, uh, however, does not reduce, so that is all we do with that. For number 8, uh, we do not have a common denominator, so we first want to determine that the, what the LCD is. In this case, we don't have to factor those denominators at all, so we just take both of them, r and r minus 7. So what we need to do is multiply the 2 over r, by what it's missing from that LCD, which is R minus 7. We do the same thing to the top and bottom so that we're not changing the value of that expression. And then the 3 over R minus 7 needs to be multiplied by R over R, again, what it is missing from that common factor. In this case, um, we multiply the 2 by the R minus 7. We get 2R minus 14. And that goes over the LCD R times R minus 7. And then just the 3R over here. And then again the LCD R times R minus 7. Uh, we can then add the numerators together. So we get 5R minus 14 over the LCD R times R minus 7. Now you do want to make sure that you factor that numerator if possible. However, this 5R minus 14 does not factor. Uh, again, the reason we'd want to do that is just in case it happens to have a, either an R or an R minus 7 as a factor, you would need to cancel that out to express that in lowest terms. All right, with number 9, we've got some factoring to do with our denominators. Uh, we, let's go ahead and start with the y squared minus 3y plus 2. And again, not meant to be the most uh, difficult factoring problems. This is just y minus 2, y minus 1. And then we've got the 6 over y squared minus 1, so that's our uh, difference of squares pattern. Hopefully you haven't forgotten about that one. Uh, let's see, so if we look at identifying the LCD here, uh, if I take the y minus 2 and the y minus 1 from the first denominator, then all I'm missing is the y plus 1 from the second denominator. So there is our LCD. Um, in this case, uh, I think I'm just going to sneak these in here. So uh, the 4 has the y minus 2 and the y minus 1. It does not have the y plus 1. So we multiply top and bottom by that. The 6 has the y plus 1 and the y minus 1. It does not have the y minus 2. So we would multiply top and bottom by that. Uh, for the 4, we end up with 4y plus 4, and for the 6, we get 6y minus 12. Now that is all over our LCD, and so we can just put those together like that. Not too tough when it's a nice addition problem like this. Clean that up a little bit there, 6y minus the 12. Um, now we can, in the numerator, uh, combine our like terms, so we get 10y minus 8, 
And that goes over the y minus 2, y minus 1, y plus 1. Now, notice that the numerator does factor. That 10y minus 8 would factor down. Um, if we were to factor it, though, all we can do is take a 2 out of that. And so we end up with a 5y minus 2. Um, and so we don't have any common factors that we could cancel out of the bottom. So either way would be fine. I'm not going to uh, bother to take the phi or 2 out here. Um, or should I just say 5y minus 2, I'm at 5y minus 4. Um, just because, again, it, it's not going to go anywhere. So, But either way would be fine. Uh, and if you can't tell whether or not you're going to have a factor that could get canceled out, uh, then you probably just want to go ahead and factor it to make sure. All right, so we're on to the last two problems. Uh, for number 10, we're finding a difference here. Um, it's kind of one of our tricky questions where they give us that 7 minus x. So remember, 7 minus x is the same as the opposite of x minus 7. So we would really look at doing that. And in this particular case, then, since uh, we would be pulling a negative out of there and we already have a minus here, I would really just use that negative to cancel or switch that minus to a plus, and we get 7 over x minus 7. So again, I want you to be able to look at that, know that you can pull that negative out of there. Um, again, if we didn't have a minus there, I might either change a plus to a minus or make it a negative 7 on the top. But again, once we do that, then we get see that we do have an x minus 7 as a factor. So you always want to have your denominators in factored form and beyond that in standard form for each of the factors. So 7 minus x, not really in standard form. Um, so anyhow, nice enough here that we end up with 9 plus 7, which is just 16 over x minus 7, and nothing reduces from there. All right, now looking at number 11, might look like a lot of stuff, um, but what I would say to do is let's focus on the x cubed plus 8. Uh, and I want you to notice that that is a sum of cubes. And once you notice that, notice that if we cube root x cubed, we get x. And if we cube root 8, we get 2. So really the binomial part of this factored pattern is right here. It's the x plus 2. I also want you to notice that if we look at what the trinomial part would be when factoring this sum of cubes, we would square the x and get x squared. This would be minus because it would be the opposite of this sign and opposite of that one. We would multiply these two together, get 2x, and then square the 2 and get 4. So really our binomial and trinomial factors or denominators here are the factored form for this. Um, so once you realize that, that makes this problem uh, quite a bit simpler, although still a lot of stuff to deal with. Um, so if we look at what we have, again, the 5 over x plus 2, actually even let me write out the LCD. So the LCD would be really x cubed plus 8, which is the same as x plus 2 times x squared minus 2x plus 4. So... Uh, I think I'll just leave the 60 alone since it already has the LCD. Again, the x cubed plus 8 is the same as the product of those two factors. Um, the 5 over x plus 2, though, has the x plus 2, but not the x squared minus 2x plus 4. So I would multiply top and bottom by that, and of course on the bottom we won't really do any multiplying. I'll just kind of leave it there, unless of course I suppose we could write that as x cubed plus 8 although I think we'll leave it in the factored form. Uh, and then we have the plus 2. And again, that already has the denominator x squared minus 2x plus 4. So that is missing the x plus 2. So multiply top and bottom by that. 
And then, of course, we come to our 60, which I'm kind of running out of room here, so I'm just going to leave that, or write that as x cubed plus 8 for now. But again, remember, that's the same as the product of, of these two. So, but just easier for me with the amount of room I'm running out of there. Um, all right, so in our numerator, uh, for the 5, we would distribute that across. We'd have 5x squared minus 10x plus 20. Again, making sure that we distribute that all the way across. We would add that to the 2 times x plus 2, so 2x plus 4. And that would also get added to the 60. And now I can just write that all as over the single... Uh, LCD x plus 2 and then x squared minus 2x plus 4. Um, in the numerator there we would need to combine like terms. We only have the 5x squared. We have a minus 10x and a plus 2x, so that would be a minus 8x. Uh, see plus 20, plus 4, and plus 60. Ooh, I thought that seemed wrong. Uh, for some reason I wrote a plus 60 there when it was a minus. So let me fix that here. So that would really be minus 60. And let's see. So 24 minus 60. So that will give us a minus 36. And then uh, the denominator x plus 2. x squared minus 2x plus 4 is what that would look like. And this does not happen every time, but the 5x squared minus 8x minus 36 does factor. Um, and actually it factors as a uh, 5x minus 18 times an x plus 2. Now that's important because we have an x plus 2 already in our denominator. And so those will actually cancel out. Um, and again, what, the way that factors is we get a minus 18x and a plus 10x, which gives us the minus 8x. And of course, the negative 18 and 2 give you minus 36, and the 5x times x gives 5x squared. So simplifying that all the way down to its lowest terms, we end up with that 5x minus 18 over x squared minus 2x plus 4. And there we go. Uh, so hopefully this was helpful and uh, you're feeling a little bit more prepared for this uh, quiz. Thanks for watching.